Hey guys, this is RLS98, and here is Devastator from Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Yep, this is what I showed off at Brick Fair, this big guy, and yeah, did you see him coming? Well, yeah. Um, if you saw my trailer for Optimus Prime was big, I'd check out this guy. Um, there's a little bit of figure to scale, but I'll take that out. And yeah, Devastator is my largest LEGO Transformer I've made to date, obviously, and the largest I guess Transformer I've owned. He has around six, a little over 6,000 pieces and um, yeah when combined he is the largest thing man of Lego in my house currently and yeah the second place would go to the Lego Star Wars UCS Death Star 2 which has like 3,400 pieces and if you took all the Transformers I made last year like all my last night and a few extras and combine them together Devastator would still have like more pieces yeah, so this guy, I started actually, I started back in March, like a little bit, around the time I made Mixmaster, my regular Mixmaster. And yeah, I work, I've been working on him all summer. He went from a little incomplete prototype, then onto stud.io, and then onto Bricklink. And I, I, I don't want to talk all about the process, but I will make a, a behind the scenes video if you guys are interested. And you're wondering, oh, why is he a secret? Um, yeah, why did I keep this quiet for so long? Well, obviously, well, the easy answer is because I wanted something cool to show off at Brick Fair, but the most important one is I wasn't sure if I was actually going to finish him. I actually fully combined him only like two days before Brick Fair, and I didn't want to let you guys down by like showing, like showing like work in progresses and stuff and, and, and giving up in the end or saying I couldn't finish, like, like yeah, like Grimlock, and then having people to ask a bunch of questions. So I worked pretty hard to get him done. I set a deadline before Brick Fair so I would be motivated and I wouldn't lose interest. And yeah, unlike a Grimlock. But yeah, Devastator is one of my favorite Transformer designs, period. And I've always dreamed of making him since I started over four years ago. Well, obviously I didn't have the parts back then. But actually, this is not the biggest uh, LEGO Transformers uh, Revenge of Fallen Devastator out there. I think the one that my friend 97 Lego Maniac made a, w a while back is much bigger than this. But he did inspire me to start making Transformers. And you should definitely check out his Devastator video, even though it is kind of dated. And now on to, on to what you see in front of you. Um, if you haven't known, Devastator is a bunch of construction vehicles, and they uh, come together to form one giant robot, just like uh, Voltron, I would say, maybe with lions instead. And these guys, unfortunately, they're just construction vehicles to limbs for Devastator. They don't have any robot modes. Um, this is my plan from the beginning because it would just be impossible to fit robot modes inside these guys. That would be accurate and have a stable, uh, stable uh, combined mode for Devastator. And yeah, this project made me realize a lot more about like Lego like physics when you're working at a larger scale. However, I did make a, I am making a separate uh, vehicle to robot. Uh, components that are separate from Devastator just like how Hasbro did and I have done that already with my Mixmaster and Rampage and yeah if you try to fit a head mode into my Mixmaster it's not gonna work that thing is my most complex transformer ever and yeah you can see how things get really almost impossible and yes I do have plans for the rest of the Constructicon components that are separate from Devastator um, besides like a uh, mix master and Ra rampage I've already done and yeah I definitely will get to them later well good thing I have a nice starting board with these guys TF Wiki says there are nine components at Devastator and I definitely agree based on what was presented when he uh, combines in the movie and it's in order to start in, in order to avoid starting arguments about the Devastator in the movie um, I suggest you just go to TF Wiki and just uh, just search up anything you want about Devastator there and let's uh, look at their individual components you got nine guys and um, this big guy in the back is Scavenger the green guy is Long Haul this guy is Bulldozer is Rampage and Loader is a Scrapper and a Cement Trunk Mixmaster um, the big crane is Hightower and um, this guy is Overload, the little dump, big dump truck. And these two guys don't have names in the movie, or they don't really seem to have names. But yeah, this is the, I'll just call them the yellow dump truck and then the yellow bulldozer. And yeah, let's uh, take a look at, them, look, look at them individually. First up, we have Rampage. Rampage is a Caterpillar D10N bulldozer. I think that's the same model as the Red Rampage, also in the film, that I have made. And I did take a lot of inspiration from my... Uh, 
my robot vehicle rampage the red one and you can see a lot of similarities to that especially with the treads and then the side sections here and kind of the blade and yeah this guy is very detailed since he's one of the first ones i've made and there's not much to it the back is a bit chunky but it doesn't really matter he does turn into the lower left leg so he needs a bit of bulk since he's a small vehicle and for features the blade can't really move um it can but i don't really want to mess with anything but he does roll very well and yeah that's about it <laughs> nice detail then the bottom is really flat as you would expect because he ends up as a foot and for size comparisons, this is going to be my comparison standard for all my uh, all Devastator's components I'm showing off. We got Hot Rod for a standard like car of my scale, and we got Ravage, and we got a minifigure. And here he is with his uh, uh, other toys. Um, here's the Deluxe Rampage that turns into a robot, and we also have the the one that comes with Supreme Devastator that turns into the foot. And here we have him next to my red rampage, which does turn into a robot. I showed that off earlier, and yeah, you can see the similarities on the side. Um, yeah, this my red rampage is a bit kind of chubby for its size, but this guy definitely has a much better, more like more proportioned alt mode. And next up, we have the yellow dump truck. Um, I know a lot of people here call him uh, Payload, and that's, I guess that's his fan name. But on TF Wiki, he doesn't seem to have a name. And in addition, I couldn't find any information on what kind of dump truck he is, so I um, I kind of just made him like a smaller version of Long Haul, because that's what he kind of looked like when that brief scene when he pulls up with Rampage. And yeah, I think I did a really good job of him. I love the side panels, and the only really bad view is the back. You kind of see that's kind of like a combiner port, but that's about it. Um, yeah, so he's, this guy's actually one of the smallest component of Devastator I have. He has about like 300 pieces, which is still kind of large. For features, the only thing he can really do is roll. He rolls very nicely on these tires. And coming into the top, you see a little bed. It does not tip, unfortunately, for transformation. And for the bottom view, I forgot uh, nothing really special here. And size comparison, he is, well, he's the smallest Constructicon. He is still pretty big. And here he is next to the next to Payload, which is the yellow repaint of Long Haul in the Hunt for the Decepticons line, the Voyager class figure, and yeah, I, this is probably where he gets his name from, because this is pretty much a yellow dump truck Constructicon. And next up we got Long Haul. He is a Caterpillar 773B dump truck, well, and he forms the entire right leg. Um, this guy, I hate to say it, he's kind of like my least favorite of all Devastator's components. Like, he's a bit fragile and things just don't line up properly with him. Which is probably due to transformation. He's a little bit more complex than the others. Well, he still looks respectable. He got the big tires and the... He got the little cabin up there and the little dumping bed. Right off the bat, the thing you'll notice is that he doesn't have a red stripe, which is something the Voyager toy has, but the actual, like, dump truck in the movie does not have a red stripe. Um, I want to stick to movie accuracy, but having that little splash of color would definitely help. And, yeah. Just looking around. Of course, he rolls on these really big tires. Just really smooth, and coming up ahead, a little details. I want to kind of like the grill, um... You can see some mechanisms inside and the little back section. The bed does not tilt, unfortunately, and this is a, kind of like a mess going on. This is like really ugly. And coming to the bottom, uh, not really anything special going on. And size comparison, Long Haul is a really big guy. And here's Long Haul with his brother, cousin, whatever, Onslaught from Transformers Last Night. Yes, I will make a separate robot vehicle Long Haul later. Ironically, they're like almost exactly the same length. And yep, here are all the toys I have for long haul. We got the Voyager class, the fast, fast action battler, and then we got the leg component of Supreme Devastator. Don't, don't ask why I have so many long hauls, but... And we have, here we have Overload. He is a Komatsu HD465-7 articulated dump truck. And he forms the lower torso, which holds like the legs, and yeah. Yeah, out of all the Constructicons <laughs> components of Devastator, this guy suffers the most in terms of, terms of proportions. I really try my best. He's a bit too wide. He could have been a little longer, but yeah, it's uh, really for transformation. 
And the interesting thing is that I couldn't find too many pictures of the dump truck online, so I think it might have been like custom built for the movie, because like the regular like Komatsu dump truck, this is actually like a trailer you could detach and you could put like a normal bed here to make it more like a normal dump truck, but it's still a cool alt mode choice. Um, a nice uh, white stripes. You can see some yellow showing and some ports here, eh, but I tried my best to cover it up. And of course, like usual, he can roll very nicely. And for a closer look, you can see the trailer here. You can hold a lot of things in here. He honestly is really flimsy. The best place to hold him is towards the middle because this doesn't stay in place and this wiggles. But coming under the front section, you can see a little something here. I'm not going to explain that any further. And as you can see, Overload is a very long guy. Um, and for his size, he is actually almost exactly a foot long. Maybe 11 and a half inches. Yeah, unfortunately Overload never got a large toy, so here is his long haul. And here we have Scavenger. He has a Terex O and K RX 400 esca mining excavator. I think that's one of the largest like mining excavators in the world. I'm not really sure, but yeah, this guy, I don't know. I want to say he's my favorite because I did put a lot of love into him and he's just ginormous. Yeah, he's just really big, obviously, because the real world vehicle is really big and... Yeah, there's just a lot of detail to go around, and, um, yeah, he has almost, like, 2,000 pieces. I would say more, like, 1,800. It's, like, the size of, like, a Star Wars UCS set, and he has, like, about roughly a third of the parts that go into Devastator. And he forms a main torso, and, well, he needs to be this big. Just a lot of detail. You can see I got the color scheme. You got the white stripes. It kind of breaks up down here. The massive treads. You can see you got the details inside the treads down. Coming around to the back, it looks really messy. It, the real thing doesn't look like this. And coming around to the top, you can see a lot of details here. This gap here is kind of annoying. You kind of tell what that thing inside is going to be. I originally wanted to have a panel fold out, but I just didn't like have the time or kind of got lazy. But it looks like it looks fine. Got a bunch of detail here. The top looks kind of just messy and kind of not good looking, but. Yep, he still has a few functions. Obviously, the giant treads can roll. It's not uh, as good since it's not on carpet, but they do roll. And coming up to the control cabin, while my Transformers aren't minifigure scale, this can actually fit a minifigure inside. Even though on the actual thing, it can fit like multiple people. You have a little control thing. You just, fit, you just set them in here. Put the panel in. And there you go, he sits there kind of comfortably. And this is my favorite feature. Um, he actually has kind of working hydraulics and this whole arm bucket area actually moves. Unfortunately on the actual vehicle there's actually four sets of these things. I only have two. There's supposed to be like smaller ones inside and I couldn't fit them all. And I don't think anyone would care. Maybe except me. But yeah this whole top red area can actually move up on this heavy ratchet joint. And as you can see this actually extends a little piston here. And this smaller section can move also. And you can see this little extends also. And then this part actually moves too. Yeah, I love this feature. And coming up to the bucket, you can see it definitely holds a substantial amount of things in here. And as you can see, Scavenger is massive. Um, yeah, this is obviously my largest single Transformer to date, even though he doesn't have a robot mood. But yeah. A car kind of just like it's not even as high as his treads and yeah. And measurement wise, he is like almost like a foot long with the bucket and like about eight inches long without the bucket. It's just like a cube. It's about like six inches tall and coming to the back about seven inches. And since he's so big, here is a soda can. And for comparison, here is the scavenger that comes with the Supreme Devastator, which I think it's really big also. And and as you can see, mine is a bit bigger. Yeah, I guess the back of mine isn't that bad compared to this. And here he is with the Voyager toy. Well, this is actually Demolishor because his main color is white. And here he is with the Star Wars Sandcrawler set. This one's from 2005. Um, yeah, they're basically just giant boxes on treads. And yeah, the sand colors obviously bigger 
And next up we have Scrapper, who is a Caterpillar 992D loader, and he forms a right arm. Um, yeah, this guy is very big. The vehicle in real life is really big also, and I try my best. Um, he's not as detailed as my previous, the previous components I've showed off since he came a bit later, but yeah, you can see his huge bucket here. Unfortunately, it looks too square, and I try my best because this actually becomes the hand, and the hand needs to be very, like, flat on the ground in order to be stable, and yeah, unfortunately, that was for transformation. You got a little thing here. You got the four big tires, smokestacks here, and a little back grill. It didn't really do much. He rolls really nicely on the big wheels. And just a lot of little details here. A little cabin and coming into the bottom, just some plates. Mm, sorry, see comparison. And here he is with the the arm component for the Supreme Devastator. Um, and here we have Hightower. He has a Cobelco CK2500 truss crane. And he makes up the upper left arm. He's kind of, he's relatively simple, simplified, like detail-wise, but I think I got all the major points across, and yeah, it's a really fun, it, it was pretty fun to make, even though he's kind of last minute, and the whole, the whole, like, uh, crane arm here is really fun to design, since, since I did it all digitally on stud.io, and it works pretty well, and you can see here, the back here, these are actually, like, the little counterweights to keep the crane balanced. And funny thing, they actually do act as counterweights because you take them off, the crane will tip forward. Bring him closer, you see a little cabin here. Just the rest of this is really plain. They should be more detailed, but I just didn't really have much time to include it. And in the bottom, uh, nothing special. And uh, functionalized high, high tower is the most uh, fun out of all of them. Well, obviously. First of all, I got. Rotating treads, rolling treads. Um, fortunately, not on the carpet, but they roll very smoothly. And yes, he has a working crane. We've got this little Technic beam, just hook it on here. And then you just come to the side here. You can fold this all down a little bit, and you can lift this piece of beam up. You can't carry too much, but he still functions well as a crane. And, well, reasonably, he is very tall. And then he stands around. 10 inches tall and here he is with the supreme class component this thing is really tiny I wish this thing was a working crane and now we have the yellow bulldozer um, yeah this guy forms the hand and I couldn't figure out what kind of model of bulldozer he is but I base him around what rampage is yeah I know a lot of people call him they call him scrap metal which is I guess is appropriate but he doesn't have like a name anywhere and yeah, honestly, he's kind of really unfinished. Um, I, he was the last one I finished up for Devastator, and you can see he kind of looks kind of messy. I based the treads off Rampage, obviously, but yeah, there's little details here and there. You got the little things in the back. If you're really smart, you could probably tell how he transforms. It's really simple, but yet drastic. And coming to the bottom, yeah, that looks kind of suspicious. And here he is comparison. He is much smaller than the other components and compared to my Rampage, they kind of look similar, but yeah, the Rampage is bigger, which I think that's reasonable. Uh, for the rest, you can see I have way too many bulldozers lying around. And last but not least, we have Mixmaster. He is a Mac granite cement truck and he forms a head. Um, this guy I started first actually because I wanted to get the head out of the way since it's the most complicated and I think I did a good job. He has a lot of details here and there, and yeah, well, most noticeably, unfortunately, I couldn't get the little dog ornament on his hood, um, because this part actually splits in half, unlike my other Mixmaster, but yeah. And another inaccuracy is that there should be another black stripe down the middle, but just like my other Mixmaster, I couldn't fit it in for stability. And he got quite a lot of wheels, they can, he can all roll. This actually is a spare wheel as with, as with that, so he actually has six rolling wheels, but yeah, he has ten wheels in total. And coming into the back, unfortunately this is all bare. This should be like a mix mixing chute coming down. Couldn't fit that in. And yeah, doesn't look, nothing really special about him right now, but looking underneath, oh yeah, you see some red. Yeah, of course, he's going to become the head. And yeah, size comparison. He is a he is a truck, so he's a bit bigger. So there you go. 
And here he is with the Supreme toy, and we have the Voyager here. Um, this thing is way too big, but here he is with my other LEGO version. This guy turns into a robot, which is very complicated, but as you can see, they look relatively similar. This guy is bigger for obvious reasons, so he might be a bit too big. But as you can see, there, there are a fair amount of trade-offs here. Um, I, I couldn't fit the spare tires in here, and... Yeah, this guy doesn't have anything going on back here, but he does have the little stripes going down here. And getting them back all together, we have Megatron from Revenge of the Fallen and my Last Night Prime vehicle mode for some more scale. Yeah, these guys look very nice together. Um, when I make their regular robot vehicle components, um, they're obviously mostly going to be smaller, as you saw with Mixmaster and Rampage. Maybe with the exception of, of Scavenger, when I do Demolisher, he's probably going to be around the same size. I tried really hard for vehicle mode accuracy, if, as you can see. And I think the scale works very nice. Um, the only main things I could really find out is kind of wrong is, I guess, Scavenger could be a bit bigger, and maybe Scrapper could be a bit smaller. And bringing Prime's trailer in, you can see it is not <laughs> that big. And one more kind of accessory to go with these guys are the little mini uh, skids and bud flaps. Actually, these two are actually a present from my friend Psycho Brick, also known as uh, Dominic. And yeah, he just gave them to me since I didn't make, I haven't made a skids and, or mud flaps yet. And these are done up in his little uh, smaller transformer style. You should definitely check him out if you haven't already, which I'm pretty sure most of you have. He does a lot of smaller transformers, and he's even made a smaller version of Devastator. We had it a little side by side, had them side by side at Brick Fair. And yeah, little cars, they're really cute. Alright, now for the transformation. Well, before we get to it, transformation is relatively simple compared to my smaller transformers. You won't see a lot like little bits rotating around because it's a bit inconvenient. But there's still a lot going on for nine guys. And yeah, transformation is relatively accurate to the movie. And if I had all the time in the world, I could definitely do a stop motion recreation. And yeah, I did show off transformation to a bunch of my friends at Brick Fair, which is a lot of fun. And it's not really based off the Supreme Toys transformation, because that didn't have the right number of components. But it's mostly like, probably because like the toy is not that accurate, and the model used for most of the toys isn't very accurate. So I, may, I mainly just watched the movie scene a bunch of times, and again and again. And I came up with my own transformation. And yeah, let's get started. We'll transform these individually and then put them all together. Okay, let's start with Rampage. First of all, you gotta just detach the side bits. He's probably one of the most simple out of all of them. And just, I just fold out like this. Then take these sections, fold it in just like my other Rampage. And take the bulldozer blade, fold it up. And then now you gotta take the entire top section and you gotta click it up three times on this ratchet joint. One, two, three. And the little pistons, they fold in. And then the legs, in order to get them to stand flat, you gotta actually pull these outwards. And that will make the base actually the bottom instead of the treads. And there you go. And now into the yellow dump truck. Um, this guy involves a lot of big sections that move around in very like drastic ways. So you just gotta untap the top, and this whole section here will just loop to the side and then coming into here opening the grill and then lifting this up this will actually just this massive <laughs> chunk will just flip out like this and then you rotate this on the ball joint just like that for now and then this section the combiner port you fold this back and this actually just folds out and then you gotta bend it 90 degrees or 180 and like that and then you just move that down again and then this back part will tab in or just push in and keep the port steady and now to this random chunk this actually folds you gotta fold the cab back in fold this in and then, uh, fold the grill down and then fold this in and then you come over here take this this is the bed this actually just folds up and then the bottom of this um, this wheel over here will just rotate around and then it will just plug right into there and then moving this down a few clicks and finally you um, rotate this section around and then this section is on a ball joint 
it'll just kind of bend inwards. It look fancy, and yeah, there you go. Um, man, this guy has it rough. He doesn't have a name, and he turns into this. And if you couldn't tell what this is, this is a giant robot thigh. And now into long haul. Long haul's transformation is much more complex than the other two, since he has to form an entire whole leg. So first of all, you gotta take this section, just gotta yank it apart. And that will cause a bed to kind of tilt, even though it's kind of in a weird way. Coming up here, take these sections, they're kind of like filler pieces, so the bed didn't look too hollow. Fold that in, fold this section in, and then fold the bed in to give him like his kind of like toes. And then coming over to here, take this section and move it on this little strut and fold it out like that. And then one last thing, um, you got to fold these sections in and fold this section inwards too. And now that that is all done, you can pull this forward like this, yeah, like that. And then coming up to here, um, did it already, um, but there's actually like a little pin here. You gotta pull it inwards. It's like a Technic pin to lock this part in place. And then you gotta put this little thing down to hold that in place. And just like that. And then coming up to the top, um, you fold this down, you take these little black tabs again, and then these will actually just tab right into here. And now that's done, you can take this section, rotate this, and then fold it like that. And now you gotta move this section like over like this. And this is the bottom of the foot right now. And you take this section up here and you gotta oops. You gotta click this upwards like that. And then this section here will bend three clicks upwards, like one, two, and three. It's really tough, but it's a good tight joint. And then now you take the whatever. First, you gotta take this little port. Let's just like just like with the the yellow dump truck, you gotta fold it all the way out and down once. And this pin, you pull it out, fold this around, tab that in. And now you gotta move the canopy as high as it can go. And then take this section, move it two clicks up. One, two, and fold the canopy down like that. And then coming over here, you gotta just untab this section. We'll deal with it later. And this wheel here, actually, this is really cool. Um, it's on a little ball joint. It'll just rotate inwards. Oh, yeah, it came off. Just rotate inwards, and then it just kinda kinda sit in the middle. Actually, most of the weight goes, a lot of the weight goes onto the tire, which is good because it's made out of rubber. And last but not least, you gotta deal with this little section here. You gotta rotate this, fold it up like that. That'll give you the clearance to fold this section down, and you can just rotate that into place. And this section over here is just gonna fold around like this. And then this section is gonna fold in. And then coming to the wheel, you just rotate that around and it just uh, sits very nicely into place like that. And there you go, there is one leg of Devastator done. Oh, and I forgot, you gotta fold the little bumpers in. And, and now into overload, here's much simpler than long haul. You just take the front section, fold this down, and then take the cab, rotate that, and then shift it towards the middle, and then like shift it like that just to keep it centered. And now, this is the fun part, um, you take this whole section here, you fold it up, and then, yeah, you gotta detach, you gotta move these little, these little, these are actually the ports that go into the leg. And you just gotta fold them out like this, and like that, and then, yeah, I had trouble covering this part up. And then you gotta come to these things, because they're gonna fall off regardless, and then, Pop them off and pop them off. Oh, come on. Like that. And then coming over here, this is actually going to sit at the bottom, actually. This part's going to just going to rest there. It's a little floppy for now, but it's going to get better. Coming over here, you fold this section around. But first of all, you got to fold these sections out and fold this in. This will give you the clearance to do this. You gotta fold this up, and then this section will go down, and this ball joint will go down. And there's barely enough room for the wheel to touch. 
Then you come to this section here, and then you have to take these two sections, just kind of yank on them. They're going to have to spread apart on this axle. They're going to become like a stud each wider. So you have these little hollow gaps. And then you're going to take these sections, fold them out, and since it ends up as a back of Devastator, his back is mostly gray, or well, at least from the CGI. So you got to rotate these sections around to expose these bits. And I'm not going to close them up because of transformation. And there you go, there is a lower torso of Devastator. And now on this scavenger, um, yeah, he's obviously the most complicated and the most time consuming to transform. So yeah, this might take a while. First of all, you gotta come over here, coming to the bottom, you gotta take this section, you gotta fold this section out. Let's see if it becomes the throat of the head. And you see he's gonna kinda undo himself, but... First of all, we gotta rotate both these treads inwards, and... He's really heavy, but coming over here, you got a system of tabs. You gotta unhook this section here. Then coming over here, you gotta flip this out, and that gives you the clearance to unlock this part here. And the tread will start to move, but before you do that, you gotta take this whole section here on this ratchet joint, you gotta flip it out. And then this part will rotate around like that. Then you gotta fold all this in. You yeah, like that, and it's just gonna sit in there. And then you gotta push this to pe uh, um, peg back in place, or pin. And then you gotta wiggle this section around to like that. And then you gotta fold this in. And same for the other side. It's a bit of a chore. You can always skip this part too. Untap, um, grab. And now you gotta unfold this section. You gotta rotate this one around. It is similar to what Psycho Brick did on his mini Devastator, but obviously this is much harder to do since it is at a larger scale. And then you see the two treads come together. Fold this in, and you gotta wiggle this section in around. You gotta line it up. Come on like that, and then this part will come in. And there you go, the two treads are connected right here. And now you got a treadless excavator. And then now you gotta untap the hydraulics. These kind of just, just kind of peg in there. Untap them, they're gonna get in the way later, but there's nothing I can do. Just untap them, untap this section. And just let them flop down like that. And then coming to these, uh, first of all actually, coming to the back here, you gotta free up the vortex grinder here, fold these sections in for now. And then this section, just grab it and fold it back for now. It's gonna be a mess of plates and it's gonna work out in the end though. And then coming to here, you gotta put your finger here, and this section is gonna fold up. You gotta free this section up. And this section is just going to collapse onto there. And well, you fold this around for clearance, and just for now. And this section over here, it's going to untab also. Same thing, the only problem is that this, you got this big cabin here. It's going to get in the way. Like that, and just fold it in like that. And then now we're going to free up the side panels here. Grabbing this part and using it as like a knob, you just fling the section open and then you gotta take your fingers in here and yank this part and it's gonna come out and the hoses are gonna come out with it too you gotta fold these as far up as they can go for now same for this side and you can see what a mess he's gonna become and fold this out grab this here drop it and then take the hoses and fold it out And now this is a very interesting part. This whole section is on this, you can see this is a ratchet joint here. This is actually the whole shoulder joint. You gotta take this, fold it. One, two, three, four. This part will kinda, this part doesn't like to stay in that much. It's gonna try to fold inwards. And you can see, you gotta, Bend it down. 
and then you gotta fold the section down as far as it can go. Actually, you gotta keep the section up, and then we're gonna do that to the other side. That's probably gonna fall back down. And now this side, just gonna grab it, and we're gonna fold it down. Luckily, there's no big cabin, so this is not as prone to falling off. Come on. Then you kind of take this section, fold it up like the other side, just for now. And then now we come to the bucket here. We got to split this entire thing. As you can see for the front, you got a little, two little studs. This part comes apart, and then all this breaks apart like that. Oh yeah, this is really drastic. Okay, then coming to this, you want to fold this out as far out as possible. Strain this, and then fold this section forward on this other hinge. Coming over here, it's cool because I'm like rotating it at the same time. You got a you got a little pin, and this is gonna go into the little holes here. Coming over here, and then you just give that nice push. That's one side, and now it's in place. You got it. just one, two, and then you got to click it up. This part can just rest now, and this cabin here will just. Eh, it's gonna fall down, but if, I'll get to that later. Same for this side. Yeah. The good thing is that um, uh, splitting this actually makes the whole torso section smaller. Fold this forward like that. And then you got, okay. Fold this and then tab this part like this. Like that. And then this section here will fold up. Like that. And then you come to these joints, move it down two clicks. One, two. That's where the arms are going to plug in. Just like that. And then coming over to this platform here, you got to bend it once upwards. I'm going to take these sections, fold them around like this, and fold this around like that. And then coming into the back, in order to get the vortex grinder forward, you gotta move this section here. And you gotta untab this temporarily. It's a kind of a weak connection, but I didn't couldn't really think of anything at the moment. Fold that like this. And then take this whole okay. Yeah, I know this is very weak. You gotta take this whole section here. This is the vortex grinder. You gotta yank it forward. And as you can see, oh okay. As you can see inside there, there's some Technic uh, lift arms. You gotta pull them as far forward as possible. And like that. And then you gotta plug this section back into here. Fold this. And this little platform inside here is gonna rotate 180. And this whole back platform is gonna kinda plug into the back here and form as like belly area, I guess. Yeah, like that. And you can see the big hole in this back. And then you gotta take the little pistons and uh, move them forward, rotate them, and then you gotta just put them like that. Just fold these forward like this. Everything here will be messed with when he combines, but here you come to his little ears. You gotta fold this section in to make him a little slimmer. Fold them like this, and then fold them. It's gonna be a series of ball joints, so they're just gonna break up and become a mess, which is accurate to his model. I fold this inwards, fold this um, down. Like that and like this and then we're gonna leave the little scoops hanging out the back and yeah there's scavenger pretty much done obviously I'm gonna mess with this when he combines but and now for scrapper scrapper is relatively fun actually you gotta attach this section fold this up actually before you do that we want to get the port out so you gotta take this grill here fold it up and then rotate this around and then coming to the smokestacks, just fold them down. This part will kind of rest up here, and then the cab goes like that. You gotta just grab this front section here, and this section, and just yank it. You're gonna pull this whole section out. This is become this upper arm or shoulder. Like that. And now coming to the hand here, just gotta take this section, fold it in. And then take these sections, fold them out and just fold this out and click these sections inwards to form that kind of triangular shape and yeah the arms are very articulated unfortunately they just sit around in 
a combined mode because they he needs to stand on them and you rotate this around and then you got to move the front wheels up to get them out of the way one and then two on this ratchet joint here and then coming over here just grab them come up all right one two like that that'll give you the room to move the arms into position and then coming up here this is really fun actually you take these sections here fold this up and then fold this around as high as it can go just for now and same for this side mm. like that and this is a very cool bit you take these sections you fold them up a little bit actually you fold them out like this and then you coming into here you can see this little flat area when I pull this section all the way out, it would give you the clearance to push the wheels in. And now that they're in, these sections actually come around and keep them into place. It's a detail in the CGI, and I want to add that. And now this part will rest up here, and this part will just fold up here like some kind of component. And then this folds in. And then these sections fold down on top. And then they fold like flat like there. And there you go, there is one big arm. And on the contrary, high tower transformation is a bit more simplistic. Coming into the treads, you gotta take these and uh, kind of connect them in to make them more skinnier. Then you gotta take the counterweight, fold this down, same for this side for clearance. You gotta winch the whole crane hook up. Then you gotta take this section, you gotta fold it out like this. And now that that part is out, you can come over here and then you gotta push this whole section out. This is the shoulder area, just like with Scrapper. Then you can set this part in and then this, all this will move this as far as up as it can go. This can all fold in like that. And then coming over here, the hook actually kinda uh, goes onto this little piece and you just need to tighten the string so it doesn't go anywhere like that and then you can fold up the counterweights and there you go that is one part of the arm and next up we have the yellow bulldozer he's probably my favorite transformation because of how drastic it is and it's pretty movie accurate too first of all you gotta take the cockpit move it as forward as you can go and then take this whole section it's gonna fold up like in the movie so you have the front grille in the front and then you're gonna fold this whole section actually is gonna start to move but before you do that you gotta fold these little pistons down so they kind of fit next to the ball joint, like that. Then you take these sections, you gotta rotate them down. And the front and the back are actually become the hand, which is actually a really neat thing, even though it doesn't look that good in the end. And then you gotta fold this down, fold this down, the whole back section kind of peels apart. And then now that that is done, this whole, this is the whole top of the hand, it's gonna move away from the hand and then you gotta fold this up and then shift it inwards and same for this side shift it inwards and now you gotta position the hand all well and you gotta fold this up and there you go there is the hand well these treads will flop down regardless but they'll be better when they get combined and I want to show this off because he's gonna he's just gonna stand on this hand, it's not articulated. Only these side sections move. You can kinda of grab something. Unfortunately he's not gonna be very articulated in combined mode. But you can see all the technique here, this is very sturdy. And he can stand on his own like in the movie. Alright, now the squad is here looking like a bunch of uh mess really messed up construction vehicles. Alright, now it's time. Constructicons combined to form Devastator. Alright, first of all, we gotta finish up the left leg. And first of all, you got the little pegs in the yellow dump truck. Fold down the bulldozer blade for rampage. They're just gonna go into those little slots here. It's obnoxious blue pegs. Couldn't really do anything about that. And there you go. Well, he's not done yet. You gotta take the blade, fold it back up. And in the CGA model, you know, this is like a stripe of a tread going down the middle. Uh, it's kind of like a fake part, but you fold down the center here to reveal some like detail. And that actually connects up with the wheel for the yellow dump truck. 
And then you come into the sides, you gotta fold the blade inwards, kind of fold all this in. And then you gotta fold all this in too. And there you go, there is his entire left leg all done. And now let's finish up the left arm. Um, Alright, you got the Leo Bulldozer. You got two little pegs in here that go into the two little Technic holes here. And just take that and just kind of shove it in there. Just like in the movie. Alright, let's form the torso with Overload and Scavenger. Um, as you can see in the back here, you got a bunch of studs here. They're just going to go right into Overload here. It's not. It's really hard to get a good view of this, but it works. I'll just fold this up for now and just come in here. Just tap like this. And just push. This came off. Just like that. And now that it's finished, you just close off the back with these little panels. And now the secondary connection point is down here, actually. See how big he's gonna become. Um, we got a bunch of tabs here that go into the front of the cab. Just kind of move them into position and just keep pressing. And there you go. That is the whole torso. It is a quite a heavy mess. All right, we got the two legs in position, and before we bring the body in, unfortunately, he needs a stand to stand up. But fortunately, it technically is legal because. You just use a Lego pick a brick cup and just set it down like that. And now this is the hardest part. There's a lot of things that can go wrong right now. Here's the entire whole body. Um, as you can see, there are two little ports here. They're supposed to go right into the two ratchet joints on either side of uh, the legs. I think I have them in an even position. And we're just going to move them down here. Okay, coming to the front. It's better to set him down the pick a brick cup first. Okay, coming down, right, coming down, down, and then you got it. It's a, uh, okay. He's balancing on the pick and coming to the back. Just gotta angle this a bit more. Yeah, that's better. And then, we come to the legs. And we just gotta join them up. And they just kinda just clip right in like the Technic pins. Like that, that's one leg. And then you got a long haul. Kind of like I just join them in here. And there you go, the legs are attached and he's sitting on his stand right now. And now for the arms, you got the scrapper here. If you open this up, you can see some Technic pins and this little pin here. They're actually going to, come on, open here, clamp around this uh, uh, ratchet joint. So you just need to get in there, and this one goes in first. Like that, and then this one just clamps around it. A solid connection. And then now for the fingers, um, I'm just going to make sure in the right position. Oh, he's, he's like reaching over the edge of the platform. That's perfectly fine because most of the weight relies on the rear of the hand. And now we got the other hand here. And just like with Scrapper, High Tower is a similar thing where you open this up and wrap that around the ratchet joint here. Like that. And this one goes and clamps around like that. And then getting the hand in the right position. And yeah, hmm, looks like we're missing something. And yeah, Mixmaster had to save the best for last and wait till everybody's combined before transforming him. That's why I did a brick fair. It makes it more dramatic, and this guy has a very ingenious transformation. If a third party company were to make a Devastator, I think they should do something similar to this. First of all, you can see these are actually his, like, the rear, like, fenders. These actually are part of his, uh, this is one of the lower part of his like uh, neck, I would say. I'll fold this forward and deal with it later. And coming to the back, the reason why there's no detail is so this part can actually fold under. And then you got the wheels there. And then now, and this is really cool. You got to break open the entire half here, and you can see part of the head. 
And where's the other part of the head, you asked? Um, it's the entire front of the truck. Just gonna wiggle all this out. Come on. On this joint, and this part extends. And then, um, coming down here, this actually you have to click this a few times to form a semicircle. It's gonna meet up with the part that goes with scavenger. And then you gotta fold the section up like this. And now, out of all my Transformers, this is definitely the coolest head reveal. I think this is the best one I could ever do. Uh, coming to the front here, you gotta split the front windshield and then fold these sections downwards, as far down as they can go. And yeah, this is the first part I designed for Devastator, actually, because I want to get this out of the way. Fold this forward and then take these sections, fold them outwards. They have a major roll later. Oh, this part's coming off. Okay, and then now you gotta fold the section upwards. You see more red is being revealed. And then you take this section and just yank it. And then, bam, there is the head. Yeah, I really love this head reveal. And then we're not done yet, of course. Um, coming to the side, um, this section will actually tab right into here. Just a little tab here. And you can fold the section all the way down. And then you gotta wiggle this in. Yeah, I really like the or origami nature of this. Just tab it, this part into place. And then this section here, it becomes more like the little hoses that is on his face. You just fold it in like that. And yeah, this is definitely a lot, pretty cool mass shifting. You gotta fold this up and then coming to the side here. Fold this out. And then second tab. And then this section here is going to actually, it's going to fold out like this, but this part is going to fold inwards. And I'll deal with that later. And you can see the whole truck turns inside out. You see the inner part of the truck here. And you just got to fold this in. And then now you gotta fold this section forward. This is kind of become his like eyebrow, I guess. And then you fold the section down. And this is the only small rotating you gotta do in the entirety of Devastator, but that's fine. And this part's really cool. These are actually fold up and then fold the section around. These are become his ears in combined mode. Yeah, that's very clever. That turns into the front of the truck. Like that. And just get everything settled. And then coming down here, you gotta Rotate this, rotate that. This is gonna rotate forward. And another cool bit is that the, fold the mirrors in, that the, the smoke sacks become the little pistons in his jaw. Most of this is actually kind of coincidence, but I guess you could say it was well planned. Like that, and then you gotta fold the jaws down. And there is the head and the rest of the body. It's gonna plug right into Scavenger. And now we have Mixed Master Transform. Let's stick him on. Uh, this part is also kind of tricky. First of all, you gotta lift the entire vortex grinder as far out as possible. And you gotta slide this section underneath. It's gonna tab into the bottom of Mixed Master. Like this. And then in order to tab it in, you gotta get your. Um, you gotta tab the head in too. That. And then the tap in the rest, you get your finger in here and just push really hard. Yeah, like that. And coming into the sides, you notice the um, mixing drum shells are at an angle for vehicle mode. These little parts actually slide in to lock them in place if they haven't already. To keep them at, a, at parallel with the, the mixing drum. And now you gotta tap them into the bottom of the, this little base right here. Gotta push that in. And you gotta wiggle this one in too. And here we have Devastator all combined, and he looks like an absolute monster. Well, he was in the movie, but this guy's just giant. Um, he looks he looks definitely much better in person, especially if you are at Brick Fair than on camera right now. To get a better grasp of his size, but yeah, man, you're looking at like six thousand Lego pieces right now, and I did put a lot of effort into this. There's just a lot of detail, a lot of things to like grasp and 
Yeah, he's not 100% accurate, of course. Um, uh, I think, actually, I think the vehicle modes are more accurate than his robot mode, but I did get all his key features down. And, yeah, it's turning him around. Um, he was a really nice kind of centerpiece to my brick fair display, and, yeah, just big. My favorite view is his back for some weird reason. I just don't know why. I just like his back. And, yeah, hopefully this is the largest transformer I'll ever need to make. And, unfortunately, he needs that stand to stand up. But, um, I think it's necessary since his joints wouldn't be able to hold the weight. And now, coming in for a close-up, just look at his face right now. I love how this thing came out. Um, his head is articulated. It can move on this ball joint here. It's probably the only thing that's supposed to be articulated on him. And then his mouth can open and close. The head came out very nice. It was the first thing I kind of tackled because it's so difficult. It might look a little bit off, but um, this is Mixmaster's front flipped inside out. And coming into his mouth, he's going to eat you up. And there's just, you can see a little bit of what's inside. It's hollow. To, I didn't put any gears or anything inside, just like in the movie. And I'll get into that later. So, yeah. It's a nice articulated head. You got all his eyes. And coming up to here, here is his vortex grinder. I think that come out, came out very nicely. Um, you got all the cheese slopes just rotating in different directions. And it doesn't move, but it's just for decoration. And then you can see this mix the side of the drum and then the wheels and this part here is a little piston that is under his jaw. I think you see them when uh, skids and mud flaps are going under him. And this is actually the fake uh, fake uh, front grill of the truck because the real one is actually under here. And then coming into the top, you see all the messy panels for scavenger. And just a lot of messy panels, which is movie accurate. And then the arm scoops here, unfortunately, I just left them on the back. They kind of fill in the space, but in the movie, they actually hold the arms in place. They're kind of like the shoulders, but these things would not be strong enough to do so because they're so thin. And looking to the top, you got all the hoses here. The wheel here, unfortunately, is not very accurate. And you got the big hole in the back, that's where everything he sucks up, it comes out of. And then coming inside, let's look inside his belly. It's a really cool view, you can see it's kind of, it's very roomy, he could eat up a lot of stuff. And he's very hollow, you can see where that's, where his mouth is. Unfortunately the neck does not articulate, but that's fine. And coming to the back, there's a lot of detail, this side has the cab here. And actually, in the CGI, um, the cab for Scavenger actually sticks on the bottom. Uh, unfortunately, it couldn't do that, but Overload's cab is actually down there, in the correct, kind of in the correct position. So, I guess they're kind of similar. And coming into his lower body, you see, um, I really like how the legs came out, the design. Um, yellow dump truck and Rampage together. And then we got long hole on this side, a lot of details. And, oh, what's that? Those are his wrecking balls. Yeah, of course, I had to add them. Movie accuracy. You know I like that. And then here it's his leg. I think this wheel should actually be going through his leg right here, but I think the solution is fine. And then for the arms, we have Scrapper. His little fingers here, they're kind of set on the ground. Just a lot of little details going on here. Shoulders could use some more detailing, but for clearance purposes, they're pretty sparse. And then for high tower, he's nice. And then you got the little six-fingered scoop on here. It's kind of strange because the promo picture of Devastator showed him with three fingers on this side. Same with this, the toys too, which is interesting. Alright, yeah, I feel like I'm not conveying his size very well, but here is the soda can for scale. First of all, he's around 16 inches tall. And from the back of long haul onto his head, roughly 20 inches tall. It's about 16 inches tall, or 16 inches wide. And for scale, we have a minifigure, Ravage, and a Hot Rod. And now we have a Regifall Megatron and two of my other Constructicons. The Avocator is kind of standing on a platform, so it isn't very fair, but he is reasonably tall. And bringing in Prime and his trailer. Well, no, obviously the Avocator is on a platform, but this trailer is still kind of small, even though it is my second largest uh, thing I made out of Lego that I can transform. And here he is with my little broken down pyramid. The reason why his mouth is hollow is because he can actually fit things in it, like these little bricks. Oh, 
maybe they can just stick them in there. But yeah, another thing you can fit, kind of fit in there here are the skids and mud flaps, or mud flaps and skids that Dominic made for me. I just transformed them into robot mode. They follow his basic frame design, so there's, there's nothing too special about them. But yeah, you can definitely fit them kind of in here. It, you can't really fit them down with his throat because the opening is so small. But And then you can get uh, mud flaps up, up onto Devastator's face. And he's like, I'm going to bust your face up. And Devastator's eyes can actually come off. It's not <laughs> an intentional feature. And yeah, now we have Devastator next to his Supreme toy from Revenge of the Fallen. Um, and as, yeah, as you can see, this guy is not too accurate. He doesn't have the right number of components. And Devastator is actually my second combiner I've made. This is my first. This is a Chop Shop from Transformers Robots in Disguise. Only my longtime fans would know this guy. But yeah, things have really changed. Um, I made these two about three years apart. <laughs> and yeah, I guess things escalated kind of quickly. And now for my <laughs> final feature of Devastator. This is definitely the coolest gimmick I could ever do with a Transformer. We have a vacuum cleaner and we got a little hose. And the reason why Devastator is hollow is because you need to run the vacuum cleaner down his entire throat. And just like that, it just runs right through the vortex grinder and just kind of, it kind of sits far back, but it's still there. Yeah, all right, and let's turn this baby on. I don't think anything could ever top this gimmick unless I do an actual fire breathing Grimlock. And yeah, the vacuum cleaner is loud, so I'm gonna just talk a little bit, but yeah, this is a, I don't know, I haven't seen anyone do a fully functional Devastator before, but he sucks these little bricks up like in the movie. I'm just gonna turn it on. <laughs> and finally we have skids and butter flaps. Alright Dominic, you gotta forgive me for this, but just gotta smush him up. It's a little bitty pieces. And then Devastator, do your thing. And don't worry, no Legos were actually harmed in the making of the scene. Yeah, there are the pieces, don't worry, they're doing just fine in pieces. Yeah, this is the end of this crazy long video. The length actually makes sense since since Devastator has 6,000 6, pieces, that is around 10 times more than the number of pieces of my largest actual transformer, and my videos usually average around 15 minutes, so it's reasonable. But yeah, Devastator is such a fun and extremely challenging project to make, and yeah, I wasn't sure if I could actually complete him this summer, but I did. I pulled it through, and he made his debut at Brick Fair, and yeah, I'm just very proud of this guy. I just love his design in the movie, and this is kind of like my dream Transformer to make. And if you could study making LEGO Transformers in college, this would be my senior project. Yeah, unfortunately, this uh, Devastator it took up most of my time this summer, so this is pretty much all the videos I have right now. I do have uh, a behind the scenes video planned for Devastator since he's gone unnoticed for quite some time and I just have a bunch of work in progress pictures and all. And I also have to do um, Optimus' uh, instructions which will come really quickly and that's probably my next video. And for new Transformers I just don't have time for that this summer and Devastator just sucked up all my pieces pretty much. I don't have too many parts lying around at the moment. However, I do have plans for the Bumblebee movie, of course, I've said that a few times, and yeah, that comes out in December, so I got some time, but I, I decided to get a head start. Yep, um, it feels weird going back to this smaller scale, since my Transformers can't get any bigger than that. And in addition, I have to make the rest of the Constructicons, I have plans for Dark of the Moon, I want to do a lot, of, this is, I have a lot of plans, unfortunately they won't get done for a while, but... Yeah, this is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this giant guy. I put a lot of work and love and effort into this giant monster, but yeah, that is it. And I'll see you guys uh, in a while, maybe, or Prime's videos next, but I'll see you guys then.